Hey everybody, welcome to Real Brave Live. My name is Dan, that's Kevin. Hi. Uh, today we're going to talk about the best-selling movie tr soundtracks of all time. And uh, Real Brave, if you don't know, we do lessons. Uh, we have an online lesson platform called Practice Pad. Practice Pad, you're, you can have a video, live video lesson with an instructor. You can meet weekly. It's really fantastic and I talk about it all the time. Uh, but we also have three locations. This show is about talking about music. Two musicians in a room talking about music and today we're talking about the best-selling movie soundtracks of all time. Kevin. Here on Real Brave Live. That's a total. <laughs> you know. You didn't even try. I, uh, I, I hammered out those chords. <laughs> Real Brave Live. Okay. The fifth. I mean, can we redo the whole thing? Sure. <laughs> uh, do you like movies? No. Okay. <laughs> All right. Wrap it up, everybody. They're just too long. They're too long. They're like you know. It's I. Uh, I oh, are you serious? I'm a millennial, sir. I want it fast. I want it now. I don't want it now. I want it yesterday. And so movies like 90 minutes to commit to that. The third Lord of the Rings movie. Forget about it. Yeah, that's that's a tough ask for just about anything. It's a commitment. Yeah. Time is our most valuable and least renewable resource. Uh. So. Hold on a second. I wasn't expecting this. Are you being serious? You don't like movies? I'm being semi-serious. Oh, man. Uh, there are movies that, of course, I love. Because uh, that would have been, like, breaking news. <laughs> you know? Breaking they would have, news. <laughs> it would have it would surpassed the, the Biden inauguration. What Biden inauguration? There was an inauguration today of a new president, apparently. Mm. It's fake news. Very good. Uh, so you, so what would be your like a like your type of movie? I guess um, I really like um, the Wes Anderson films, the Royal Tenenbaums, the Life Aquatic. Those are great movies. Yeah, they're good. They're out there. They are a little yeah. They're 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 surrealist yeah to a degree, um, but they're also very like poetic, and there's something very down to earth about them. Uh, Wes Anderson. Um, but of course, I'm a big fan of the Star Wars franchise, All right. the original trilogy. Prequels, not so much. Sequels, I'm split on still. Yeah. But the soundtracks to those movies are fantastic. Are they on this list? No, they're not. Ah. I mean, we, we <laughs> can... There's one song piece from that we could all almost sing from Star Wars. The... The main theme. The... Fun fact, that's the, when I was like six or seven, my parents got me like a 24 key keyboard. It was like the Muppet Babies mm. themed keyboard. And that was the first song I ever plunked out on it. Ah. By did ear. you find the notes? Yeah. It was, uh, half step, half step, half step, half step. Half step. Yeah. Went <laughs> seven half steps up to the fifth and then so on and then the rest is history. That's a sign that you have the ear. Yeah. She has the gift. Uh, I, I guess I was blessed with uh, just a natural ability to pick out melodies by ear. But not sing. But not sing. Not reproduce them by voice. No. Not my forte. Not my forte. And if you're interested in not my forte, you can go uh, to a group that we hold. It's called the Practice Portal. Yes. And if you like Facebook groups and you like learning about music, uh, Kevin holds a... Uh, Holds court every week. Yes. Um, showing his lack of chops on the piano. Yeah. So the idea behind that was um, it's a pra it's the practice portal, and you can join it if you're playing any instrument and you're looking for tips or tricks on how to practice more effectively, or if you're looking for like expert advice from professional instructors who you want uh, who who would be able to help you like with a chord progression or a riff or something like that. Go in there, and and there's plenty of resources available, but. Uh, yeah, the point behind that Not My Forte series was that classical piano is not my strength, but it's always been a favorite of mine to listen to. So I'm right. week, every week I put in a, maybe an hour of just me learning parts of a piece, and then I spend the week practicing it. And the, the whole idea is to show what practice can do, what consistent regular practice can do for you as a musician. And so far I've learned uh, Chopin's Opus 9, number 2. Right now I'm working on Debussy's uh, Reverie. Mm. And I know that those are both French. It's a French name and a French word that I can't pronounce correctly. It's spelled Reverie. I don't know. Um, it's one of my favorite old-time classical piano pieces, and I'm like three-quarters of the way through it. I'm very thrilled. Fun fact, 9 out of 10 Dan Powers don't speak French. 9 out of 10? Yep. Show me that 10th. 
I speak French fluently. Really? Just, just street French. Oh, uh, see so you play. Yeah, I throw F bombs everywhere. I'm like, dude, fromage. Uh, so, uh, the best selling movie soundtracks of all time. And uh, coming in at number 10, we have Flashdance, a 1983 movie about someone who dances on a stage. Uh, doing its. What? <laughs> Starring who? Of course, I have no background information. Um, Flashdance. Well, you never saw Flashdance? Because it is a 1980s movie. It's probably one of the pinnacle 1980s movies. Are we starting at number 10? Yeah, why wouldn't we start? Why would we start at number one? Uh, well, I thought because there's 15 on this list. I guess we don't have time to get all 15. We've but got. Oh I yeah. Some of them. Oh, okay. she gave me 10 through through one. Oh, okay. It's an abridged version that you're not a part of. Fine. Um, then I guess we'll miss out on Led Zeppelin's "The Song Remains the Same." Oh, you know that's what. See, that's what you said that because I was like, I could have sworn that was on the list, and that's okay, Maddie. That's it's fine. Yeah, that's got a uh, rock and roll. <laughs> Song remains the same. Others. <sighs> Is that their documentary? I don't know. Ah, uh, you know, so that so that's why I brought up. Should we go into this? I don't know. Maybe we'll get to we'll get a fast to one. So number fifteen on this list we got from Business Insider again. This is strictly albums sold. Yeah, this okay? is not a metric of this musical is, goodness. This is just money. Strictly album sold. We're gonna take Business Insider for their word and say that they've got these facts right. Okay. Um. And we started at number 10, Flashdance. Sorry about that. But you're saying number 15 on that list was... The song remains the same from Led Zeppelin, which, yes, is the documentary uh, of the band, I believe. Of the band. Now, did, did the, uh, did the uh, documentary and the uh, album come out at the same time? I don't know. And this is... We were talking about this before with The Wall. I was going to bring that up. Um, what makes a film? What makes a uh, what makes an album a soundtrack? Yeah. Does it is does it have to come before the film, or does it have to like accompany the film? Is the film about the song? Are the songs about the film? Is it an amalgamation of pop songs that yeah. just accompany the film? You know, like what what is a soundtrack? So fifteen, uh, song remains the same. Mm -hmm. Is Led Zeppelin, mm -hmm. and uh, I want to look it up really quick. The song but, remains the same. Right that movie came out seventy uh, six. But the song, the song remains the same, is from their album Houses of the Holy. Um, it's also got No Quarter and Jamaica and others, but. Uh. So the album came out in 1973. The documentary was filmed in 1973. I'm going to guess that they were made together. Yeah. And the song was made for the documentary. Yeah. So what songs are on The Song Remains the Same? The song remains the same. Oh, in the movie, they have rock and roll, Celebration <laughs> Day. Celebration Day. All right, oh, so it's crazy. more of like a best of. Rain song, Dazed and Confused, Stairway to Heaven. I've actually Day. never seen it because uh, for, for a variety of reasons. Um, Laziness is... I was, a, I was a big Zeppelin fan back in, uh, back in the day. Um, and, uh, yeah, th that sounds like a what I would consider to be a greatest, not a greatest hits, but like really yeah. a good collection of songs, Days and Confused. Celebration Day is like a, a B-side. Wonderful. But it's a great one. A um, comment below, by the way. Can you pull those comments up so we can talk to people? There's none. Yeah, there is none. That's okay. So far. Everybody's watching. Two people things. are watching. Uh, probably myself included. To yeah, monitor. so there's one other person. <laughs> there's one person, person, person watching. Hey, thanks All for right, watching. All right, well, uh, but, so then before we get into the top 10, uh, uh, the issue I have with this list is uh, The Wall sold um, a tremendous amount of records, which I'll tell you at the end. Uh, and The Wall was released um, prior to the movie. Uh, Roger Waters did write the script for it. It was directed by someone else and mm -hmm. Bob Geldof in it, but mm -hmm. um, I, I think it should be on this list. So coming in number 10 was, was Fla uh, Fly Me. Flashdance. Flash I already said, co uh, sold six million copies. Famously, um, what a feeling in Maniac. Ma Maniac. Yeah. Maniac. Bam, 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 bam. It has that famous synth part. Yes, it does. In the oh, that's the movie where she's like on the chair and then she yeah, pulls the a thing and the water splashes down. You were confused by that. I thought it was Splash Dance. Splash is a movie. Oh. Any relation? No. No relation. No mermaids and and dancers on stages. Splash is the one with Tom Hanks where the mermaid. Yeah, uh, Daryl Hannah. Ah, oh, thank you. 
Yeah. I was actually named after the mermaid in that movie. Really? really? Yeah, no joke. Your name's huh. not Daryl. There's a lot of... Madison. Oh. There's no coincidences. <laughs> That's the character. No, my name is Daryl. There are no coincidences we were talking about this today. Number nine. Uh, Space Jam. 1996 movie, famously uh, with Michael Jordan in it. There is a sequel coming out this year. This year? Yep, with uh, LeBron James. Notable songs, I Believe I Can Fly. I believe I can... R. Kelly. R. Kelly. That's, uh, you know what, of There's all the so things he's things famous he... for, that's probably one of the better things. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I, I have this movie on VHS at my mom's house. Great movie. It's a great movie. Uh, really, really good. It broke the fourth wall. It yeah. after after the other movie that broke the fourth wall. Um, well, the f- the fourth wall is a a term that goes back to like Shakespearean times. Well, I I think they broke the fourth wall in the sense that they brought the characters in from from Imagine Land into the real world. The fourth wall is, means something different. Yeah, they combine 2D and live action. Yeah, I, I got to, too totally to, the fourth I shouldn't wall, be the host of a show. So the fourth wall <laughs> is when you're watching a, like yeah, a, yeah. a stage, and then they look at the audience and they say, That's I can't believe wall. this is happening to me. That's a fourth wall type thing. But yeah, I think they broke the fourth. <laughs> isn't bringing uh, fictional characters that we all believe are fictional into real life? Isn't that a glass ceiling? The glass ceiling is when... Uh, Something happens that's impossible, that's never happened before. It's impossible to bring cartoon characters from the Looney Tunes into... Uh, I didn't know the Martian monster had uh, such uh, hoop, hoop skills. Yeah. So, but he, he was in that, right? I don't know. Tasmanian Devil, though. I wasn't surprised by his, his, his footwork. <laughs> You're not a basketball person, Swish. Right? Also on that is uh, Fly Like... Uh, not, yeah, Fly... Fly Like an Eagle. Fly Like an Eagle. Steve Miller. Yeah. He's one of the best selling artists of all time. Is that right? Rightly so. Yeah. Number eight is Waiting to Exhale, which I was, this is a little surprising, but awesome to see. Uh, Whitney Houston and various artists. All new songs written and produced by Babyface. <laughs> Face like a baby. I don't know what that is. What does Babyface look like now? I'm told that I have a baby face. <laughs> <laughs> if you name Babyface and you're like 75 years old, what unless, unless you're like a Benjamin Button type, <laughs> where as you get look older, at that baby fish, yeah. But I'm old. <laughs> oh man, I uh, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston was on that. Uh, it sold seven million. Uh, prior to that, Space Jam sold six million, according to this list. And uh, in waiting to exhale, notable songs are Exhale, Exhale, Shoop Shoop, Exhale. And why does it hurt so bad? I don't remember. I don't, I don't remember know any of these songs. Yeah, sorry. Shaka Khan though. Shaka Khan. We obviously haven't seen that movie. Uh, uh, it's, uh, Greece, 1978. John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. Here's one. Comes in at number seven. Yeah, this is uh, this is one of your favorite movies. Yeah. You know, something like that. I I had I was uh, dating someone who uh, was in a. Play. Was it in the summer? This, not this past. Were you summer. down the shore and you met a girl? Not recently. I'm saying like a long time ago. I'd get in a lot of trouble. Tell me more. Uh, and she made me a star in, with well, not star, but be a part of this. Tell me it's more. Terrible. <laughs> Tell me more. And it's on. It's actually floating on the internet somewhere. You could probably. You might be able to find it if you search hard enough. <laughs> I don't know why. I told All that. night. <laughs> Daniel spend, Powers Jr. Spend Chris. hours. Uh, my marching band in high school performed this as our halftime show. The whole thing? No, just like a three-song medley from it. Oh, okay. There's great music in there. It's iconic. I mean, what, can, what, what more can you say? What about Grease 2? That's not on here. No. Uh, Forgotten in the annals of time. Regreased. It's not. Regreased. <laughs> Greasy. <Yeah. laughs> uh, what more can you say about that? Nothing. Uh, so, uh, coming in at number six would be Titanic. What's the one song from that? My heart will go on. Every night in my dreams I see See you I be See you Yeah. Well, that's, uh, it sounds, the way you're playing it makes it sound like an 80s like ballad. Yeah, a little bit. It could very well be. Dun, 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 dun. Makes me think. 
Might have to do that on stage. That'd be, that's actually a, a, that's a banger of a song. Say what you will about Celine Dion and, and, and the music of the 90s and Titanic and, and, and uh, what's his name? DiCaprio. Say what you will about all that stuff. But that's a well-written song. Yeah. But it's, it's sung by Celine Dion. Yeah. She's Canadian. Thanks, Canada. For Celine and Justin Bieber. 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 Thank you. Uh, I saw this in the movie theaters with, my, uh, with a good friend of mine. Twice. You went oh, with a male friend <laughs> to the movie theater. To the theater. To the theater. Two times. He didn't see it to see the same movie. Yeah. And he, uh, no wait. In a theater. I didn't. I saw it with the first time. I saw it with a male friend. Mm-hmm. And then the second time I saw it with a male friend. Cool. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. That's, I was uh, totally fine. <laughs> Seinfeld. Not that there's anything wrong <laughs> yeah. with that. I was totally fine with that. And. Um, you know, years later, I remember watching it with my kids, I think, uh, or one of my kids, and, you know, it, just, it doesn't hold up in, no. some, in a lot of ways. It's a period piece. No, it's just the way it was that they acted. It's just, mm. I, I'm surprised, like, how well it was received. They, hot, the, they hot said leaves. Jack and Rose, like, a thousand times in really? the movie. Yeah, you don't remember? No. Oh, man. Do yourself a favor and never watch it. Oh, okay. But I was, I was um, a big fan of the Titanic. The ship or the movie? The ship. <laughs> you were there when it de- when it embarked. You were like, yes, yes. Titanic, go Titanic, the biggest I am, ship. I am 112 years old. She's unsinkable. <laughs> Kevin, I think your mom commented something. My mom? Is she Elaine House? No. <laughs> but hi, Elaine. <laughs> uh, Elaine says she was six weeks pre- pregnant with our new hire. When she saw the Titanic. This is Paul's mom. Oh my goodness! Yes. So Paul, Paul and Elaine are both uh, <laughs> with your new hire. No, it's not me. I've been here a little while. Well, I am, I'm, ex- I'm ecstatic because I didn't know that Elaine... Um, you didn't know there was a relation? I had no idea. Now That's I how un- Paul got started here as a student. Is his mom took violin lessons. Well, wow. Wowee. Wowee. That's amazing. Yes. Um, Paul's job is to watch this show and yes. tell everybody about it. Yes. It's <laughs> first official task. <laughs> it's like, why? Um, number five, Dirty Dancing. I had the time of my life. So uh, both number five and six sold 11 million copies, <laughs> apparent, according to this list. Notable song. Yep, I've had time in my life, and she's like the wind. Uh, there's a lot more in these in this song. One uh, in this. It's actually a really good. Yeah. It's a it's a period piece too, so it has some classic stuff. But it it. it this reminds me of sixth grade. Um, this reminds me that if ever if ever I uh, uh, encounter a baby, I remember to not put it in any corners. Because nobody puts baby in the corners. <laughs> Yeah, there's that. I don't know how to bring that up in a conversation. Um, without sounding like a. Somebody jerk. said this is better than late night TV. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Terrence, thanks, thanks for watching. And Tima, the, a, a fan, a friend of the show. Friend of the show. Thank how you. much? How much is Paul paying you to watch this show? Yeah, Paul, great work. <laughs> You're really like maybe it's been a minute since we instructed you to do that. So, great job. Uh, Terrence, thanks for joining us. I wish it was Tima. It is Tima. Um, Forrest, uh, Forrest Gump comes in at number four. That's such a good... That is a great soundtrack. That soundtrack is like... I mean, because it's, it's, it's a history of America through the eyes of this guy, Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks. Um, so, you know, you start... Uh, not a full history of America, but like from like the 50s with Elvis all the way through to... To the, like the 90s, I guess. Yeah. Um, two of the songs that are listening here are Hound Dog. Ain't nothing but a hound. Elvis. And then uh, Respect, just a little bit. Aretha. Uh, the one that sticks Aretha. out in my mind from that is, of course, um, Freebird. Remember when Jenny is in the hotel hitting some dark times and we got Freebird playing in the background? The. Yeah, montage. Montage time? 
when when she goes through her life in the past, yes. or like in that kind of how she got to that point, and going a little bit into the future. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. Little yeah. Bit, a little montage. I love montages. Montages are great. Um, the 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 maniac is a great montage one. Was maniac also in Footloose? She's a maniac. Maniac. Yeah. No. Oh, I'm just confusing Footloose. Flash. Dance. That's surprising that Footloose isn't on here. Was Footloose in the top fifteen? I'm sure. It was. Oh, I thought it, I thought it was Footloose, but it's Dirty Dancing. Never mind. I'm getting you old. got Dirty Dancing and Footloose. Yeah. Confused. These are all dance m- movies. You need to watch Dirty Dancing, my friend. I mean, yeah, sure. Take your girlfriend Sarah Lords to the television. Okay. And watch Dirty Dancing. All right, we're going to... You know, we're trying to do more date nights in, in 2021. On that note, every fr- I said this to Melissa the other day. Every Friday mm-hmm. for the next 52 weeks, mm-hmm. or Thursday, depending if we have something to do, mm-hmm. we're going to watch the 50 Greatest Movies. Oh. Which I've never done, because I haven't seen a bunch. There's so many. Um, I pitched something similar to, to Sarah Lords, uh, but not 50. Uh, it was the 10... Perfect movies according to Metacritic. So on there is like uh, Vertigo. Ooh, good movie. Um, the Godfather. I haven't seen that in a long time. Um, what was it? Uh, Casablanca. Very good movie. Uh, and others. Yeah. Oh, uh, Citizen Kane. See, that's the movie. I that's, love that movie. See, that's, see, that's the movie. That, but I, it's going to be hard for me to wait 50 weeks to get there. Because every single mm. list has Citizen Kane as number one. Yeah. And I've never seen it. Really? Yeah, I haven't either. I've never seen it. So, something about a snow globe and rosebud and people yeah. and saying words into the camera. Yes. Speaking of words into the camera. Hi. Number three. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Number three, we have Purple Rain. Thirteen million copies by the Purple One. The artist formerly known as the Purple One. The artist formerly known as the Symbol now known as Prince, who is no longer here. Purple rain, purple rain. Nope. Nope. Uh, it's like a, that's a oh. five to one thing yeah. that you had to do. Na, 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 purple rain, purple rain, purple rain. If you like this, stay tuned later while Kevin keeps singing the purple hits. Purple rain. He was asked to sing at Biden's inauguration today, but they they decided that was a terrible idea. They couldn't afford me. Purple rain, <laughs> purple rain. He's actually a really great guitarist. Purple rain. What I meant by great guitarist, I was talking about Prince, not Kevin. Hey, Kevin is. <laughs> Kevin's a really good guitarist too. <laughs> I hold my own. No, you you're you're pretty amazing, man. We did we played. Do you do you remember playing Purple Rain? It's one of my go tos. At last, at the last Christmas, Christmas party. Yeah, it's yeah. Melissa. One of Melissa's favorite tunes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You doing just it, Justin. That, you just completely ruined it. <laughs> you are a really great guitarist. Oh, you need to you need to keep sticking to that. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> what a bad habit. Don't don't quit your day job as yeah. a guitar teacher. Don't don't quit your day job as a guitar teacher. So it sold 13 million records, of course. When the Doves Cry, let's cr- let's go crazy, and the entitled the title of the of the movie uh, Purple Rain, which is when you listen to that solo at the end of the song, it's just crazy. Oh, and then yeah. he goes into that really high pitched thing that yeah, I yeah. won't do right now. Uh, you know who does a really great cover of that song? Fish does a cover of that. Of course. Do we have an image of what the band Fish that you want to throw up there for Kevin? There you yes. go. There it is. Uh, so, but in their rendition, instead of a guitar solo, there is a vacuum cleaner solo. Why? The whole thing is sung by the drummer who comes out from behind the drum set. Trayana Sazio, the guitar player, goes and plays the drums. So it's drums, bass, piano, voice, and then instead of guitar solo, it's a vacuum cleaner. All, All right. right. Electrolux. Vacuum. Uh, Kevin gave me three mixes of uh, fish. And five. Five mixes. I've gotten through one. Good. Um, I'm still on the one. I, I occasionally James pull it up on the spot on my Spotify to listen to it because because we we're gonna have a fish show, but I really need to listen to it so I can understand it because I, I think I've been unfair to to fish in general. Yes, but not to fish fans who are notoriously awful. 
are are they awful about other people that don't like? No, the they're just be- nobody likes not fun to be around. Really, <laughs> they're obnoxious about their music. Well, no, it's just they're kind of insufferable. Like Mets fans insufferable. Like yes, they, like, or Phillies fans more more like Phillies fans. Okay, because they don't get any respect. That's part of it. R e s p e c t. That is part of it. Uh, though, though, uh, it's it's. No, oh, it's it's like we, it's like we love the band, but we don't like to be around each other, so much. That make, makes no sense. It's you you're know, making me this go is, to this, a concert and no, and, and you'll then you'll understand. I need to get through the first mixes first. Yeah, before I even discuss being around fifty thousand people that are going to give me COVID nineteen. I think one, the one right now uh, is that I gave you is like the pop one, and then there's the. The jams compilation, yeah. and then there's the compositional one, yeah. and then there's the silly funny one, and then the the, the spooky scary one. I, those two I don't understand. You'll when you hear them, you'll understand. Is it? Do, I don't. Can we can we keep this for the fish show? Yes. All right. Good. <laughs> oh, we got a comment about Adam Levine's cover of Purple Haze, which he apparently made. Purple Haze or Purple, Purple, Purple Rain? Purple Haze. Purple Rain. Purple Rain. Where does he, they, where does he get off doing a cover of Purple Rain? I don't uh, know. Man, Adam Levine is incredibly famous, man. He's the guy from Maroon, the Maroon Five, Mar- Maroon Sixteen, and now is also the new Freddie Mercury. Is that right? No. According to his he's in Queen. Yeah, who was singing with Brian May and the rest no. of the band. No. Yeah, people I'm, love Adam Levine, man. Mm-hmm. You know, more power to him. The first time I heard that band, I was like, ah, you know jam band kind of feel like a funky funky uh three minute three to five minute band you hear the first album from maroon five yeah not a while yeah it's got like um not a funk but it's more like a groovy soloy rock band feel okay and their, their first song was okay they have a song called sunday morning right is that know. right i don't know but, but the guy can sing. I'll give yeah, him that. Yeah, I guess he can sing. Who is the new He's Freddie really Mercury, cute. though? What? Is it Adam Levine? Adam Levine and what? And Queen. Adam Lambert. Lambert. That's a different person, That's man. a way different guy. Yeah, no, yeah. totally different. Which is the one with all the tattoos that did the Super Bowl show? Levine. That's the Levine. Lambert's a totally different... He was an American Idol guy, wasn't he? American Idol guy, yeah. yes. Neat. And representative of, you know, Freddie Mercury, because Adam, Adam Lambert... Uh, it's gay and uh, represented for the community right, people right. and what and what Freddie sta- uh, stood for. So uh, a- Adam Lambert is uh, different than Adam Levine. Uh, it makes me that makes me happier to know that Adam Levine is not. So newsflash, Adam Le- Adam, Le- you just caused three people to go to Google right now and good or, or, or text their friends. Adam Levine. I've always wanted to be an influencer. <laughs> You're an influencer <laughs> in the wrong way. We've got comments. Um, uh, uh, Janine. Uh, Kunish? Kunish? Oh, yeah. Hi, Janine. Uh, this is very entertaining as I homeschool. To which Elaine has responded, I love Wednesdays. I look forward to Dan and Kip. That's amazing. We're making a difference. Madison, how do you feel about that? I'm happy. Yeah? Yeah. By the way, we are doing this very safely. Kevin's at least seven to eight feet away from me. Yes. And so is Madison. Yes. Um, I'm, actually, I'm in a different building. She's actually not even here. So we're up to number two on the, uh, what is this? The, the best-selling movie soundtracks of all time. Uh, coming in at a hot 15 million records sold. Saturday Night Fever, 1977. Of course, the Bee Gees. Give, give me your, in- you can do the Bee Gees, come on. Something like no. that. No, that was good. That was, that was pretty close. That was something like that. I just that. Fade that fade that fade that fade that oh, I want to learn that riff now. They That's are really some riff. of the best songwriters. They're up there with the Barry Manilow's and the um, Beatles. Their songwriting is incredible. Yeah. Oh, just outdated. yeah. They're like, uh, I mean, because they have like a sort of niche sound of like the disco thing. And I, I love, as far as men singing falsetto, I love theirs. Do you have a, <laughs> <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> tell me more, tell me more. <laughs> oh, it's an E flat. 
So that's number two, 15 million copies sold and counting. Staying live with John Travolta uh, in coming in in another movie, but he just didn't sing any of the songs. I never saw Saturday Night Fever. I saw Airplane, which had a huge Saturday Night Fever uh, part to it, though. One of my favorite movies. So, sorry, what? Airplane. Airplane had... There's a Saturday Night Fever uh, ripoff, like like a 20, 10 minute segment in it. I don't remember when that. When he it's a flashback montage. He goes back to when he met Elaine, and they're actually in a dance off, <laughs> and like he's there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> it's so stupid. That's my sense of humor, though. Terrence says disco's coming back, y'all. It better. No, it better not. I'm um, there's a you know what it I wouldn't not. I wouldn't be uh, too opposed to that. There's a, such a fine line between disco and funk. And that that line is a, just a synth string section and like some wind chimes, but the bass lines, it's all about the bass lines. Okay. I was listening to Brian Eno mm. talk to uh, The Edge mm-hmm. on Sirius XM about funk bass lines, mm-hmm. and he suggested that as early as the 20th century, early 20th century, when jazz was coming around, that the tuba. Was the formulate was the base? Yeah, because of the way it's actually played, mm. Uh, mm. right? Like right. the way it comes out, and that's where people got the idea to bring it to a bass instrument. Yeah, no, that um, that that tracks. Uh, Dixieland was one of the first forms of ja- jazz, mm-hmm. and a Dixieland rhythm section is a tuba, which was the bass, the boom, 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 yeah. boom, a uh, banjo, and sometimes a hi hat snare combo. And there you have it, guys. There's a little bit of education. If you're looking for more education, we do this weekly, or more than weekly, um, on the Practice Portal on the Real Brave page. Reach out to us. Follow us. Make sure you're following this whole thing because there's some good stuff happening this year. Some really good stuff. We're almost at number one. I wanted to get to um, the wall, though. I just want to come back to that. So on this list, number 15 mm-hmm. was Song Remains the Same, which is Led Zeppelin, which is based off of Basically, their greatest hits was what it sounds like. They made a documentary and kind mm-hmm. of like it had like flashbacks and weird stuff happening. Mm-hmm. But the wall was made a couple of years after the album was released, mm-hmm. Pink Floyd: The Wall. Then the movie came out, and it's definitely a um, an out there type of movie. Uh, it's directed by Alan Parker, uh, according to Wikipedia, and um, <laughs> it was written by the 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 infamous Roger Waters. Mm-hmm. Bob, Bob Geldof plays the rock star Pink who was driven into insanity by the death of his father. And it's all sorts of crazy stuff happening. But they, it, The Wall has sold 19 million records. The one that comes in at number one, according to this list, sold 17 million records. I'm not taking anything away because this is a, an incredible um, accomplishment. But don't you think that The Wall should be on this list too? Absolutely. I hate lists. I'm, I'm done with lists. So you what- know what? Write this down. These are the five things I hate about lists. Number five, they're all opinion-based. Well, hang on. What? You, 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 <laughs> you're doing a list about lists. <laughs> it's okay. Number four, I might not be able to get to number one. Number three, every time I pick up a list, there's a different list about the same list. Right. Uh, number two, we're going to skip number two and go straight to number one. I hate lists. Right? Because that's what lists are. Yeah, it's, it's really just a headline-grabbing thing. You did the... Not based in fact. Right. A lot of them are clickbait. I understand that. Totally. But they serve a purpose. I don't know. To, to prioritize how much you hated lists. I don't know if you realize, but you created a list. This is true. So I hate myself. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Comment below if you hate Dan as well. Can, can anybody guess what number one is that's watching the show right now? We got uh, several people watching. I know Janine, Elaine, I believe Terrence is still on. We're going to leave this hanging out there. What is number one? What is on the number one? What do you think number one is? Yeah, well, before I put time. it out there. There's um, about 30 major films made a year. Can you give me the Jeopardy theme? No. Oh, you want me to? Oh, yeah. She's going to do a drum roll, too. That's good. 30 major films a year, or it used to be, at least in the year of COVID, we're probably much less. Um, over the course of 30 years. Janine says Men in Black. Men in Black has... Ah, oh, that's, that's far now. Men in Black. Men in Black is one of them. Is that on the list? Maybe. That was not on the list anywhere. It's not on the list anywhere. We just ruined it. Men in Black. I love that Men song. in Black soundtrack. I love any soundtrack that or any song that has Will Smith on it. 
fails. Haha! Woo! Um, we'll it was see. it was three X platinum. That's three million. Not anywhere close to being on this list, unfortunately. Um, actually. The room, two thousand three. The room. Have you guys watched that? It, I love the room. The with, room. With uh, Tommy Wiseau. Yeah. Oh hi, Mark. It's it's a. Uh, it's one of those cult phenomenons. Is that the, like the worst movie of all time? Yes. It's really infamous for being like the worst movie of all time. There was there was a yeah, movie yeah, yeah. about how bad it was starring Seth Rogen and uh, what's his name called the Disaster Artist. Oh, uh, with um, James Franco. James Franco yeah. about Tommy Wiseau. That's what that's what that movie is yeah. about. Yeah, I have that on my list. <laughs> Hundred of greatest movies, movies to watch. Yeah. <laughs> I do have a list. I do hate myself, don't I? <laughs> Uh, Elaine says, the movie with all the music in it, and you're correct. Oh, wait. Let me do the thing. We're going to do the thing? Where is it? Yep. I should have had this ready. All right. Well, does anybody, do we have anybody else? Wait. Ah, boo. I'm coming in. Coming in at number one. It's a long. That's a long drum. <laughs> Uh, you could probably barely barely hear that. That's like somebody getting ready to jump the trapeze. <laughs> it was a clipping. I just kept going. Great. Coming in at number one is uh, the bodyguard. There you go. And, and I, <laughs> Seventeen million copies of CDs and tapes. Always love you. Notable song is I Will Always Love You by the recently departed uh, Whitney Houston. And uh, that's it. That is the, the top 15. Of course, I think that number one should be The Wall. But according to Business Insider, mm. I'm wrong. And that's it. That's yeah, what we know. got. That's, uh... I'm going to do that every week. <laughs> you, my should, thing. you should. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think when everybody hears that song, they immediately think of the wall and uh, what's his name? Um, Dennis Quaid? It's not Dennis Quaid. It's Bob Geldof. Bob Geldof. Geldof. You mean the singer? You mean the guy in the movie? Yeah, or the yeah. main character. Yeah, the main character. The bodyguard carrying Whitney. No, Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, thank you. Jesus. What? Why did you say Bob Geldof? I thought you were talking about the wall. Oh, no. <laughs> Bob Geldof is not in... The bodyguard. Didn't they redo the bodyguard? <clears throat> the. I can fact check. Could you? Can you fact check that? We need famously need fact checking. Yeah, you know. Again, this is a metric of sales. These are. These oh, are. They're apparently remaking it like now. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, well, that's what we needed. A, a shameless reboot, money, money grab, cash grab, reboot. Nah. It'll do well. So will Space Jam 2. I can't wait for that. It's going to be good. It's LeBron's in it. Uh, or famously, my son says, The Bron. The Bron? He, as a kid, he said that. Yep. That's true. If you're watching that, Daniel, good job. So uh, we've gone through the 10 uh, best-selling soundtracks of all time. And um, this, has been, uh, this has been fun. I think this is, we're, on, we're on a good track here. We're finding something to do. We need more games, so. We need more games. Um... Yeah. Yeah, we need more games. I think so. Because what's life without a little little fun? Um, it's a lot of work. Mostly work. Well, we'll make you do it, and then we'll forget to do it. Yeah. Like we do every time right. we come up with a game. Um, <laughs> here's a game. What? Name this tune. Uh-oh. I'm not good at this game. Uh, how does this one go? It goes... Uh... song I should have looked up how to play it I'm butchering it now it's the, it's the wall another brick in the wall oh 
really butchered that. Yeah. yeah, I don't know about that one. I got the chorus right. All we all judged out. Not a brick in the wall. We'll work on the game thing. We've come up with a couple, uh, famously uh, Lennon or Lennon. Which I, I've come to find out, pointed out by one of my students. That John Lennon or, or uh, I Vladimir Lennon. I spent like an hour picking quotes and saying, this could be either or. And one of my students did a quick Google search, Lennon or Lennon. That totally exists already. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And it was like the same quotes that I picked. I'll um, never get that. If you're a fan of the show, go back a couple weeks, you'll find that. Janine said the Big Chill had a great soundtrack. That was actually number eleven on the list. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Big Chill. Uh, yeah, it was r- right outside the the ten the ten slot. Uh, Big Chill had uh, Jeff Goldblum. Mm-hmm. What about? Um... So I I think one thing that's important to point out here is that the soundtrack soundtracks are collections of pop songs. Whereas a score is like orchestral music written to accompany the, the, the movie. So like... Well, according to my notes that I ripped up, uh, you're correct. Yep. But not... How many, how many of the top ten, mm. Kevin? Yeah. Can I have the Jeopardy theme again? Mm, sure. I'll do it in G. How many uh, of these top ten finalists had songs in it that weren't original? Uh, the number would be first and then name which. What is zero? You are incorrect. Oh, man. Uh, coming in at number four, Forrest Gump, I don't think had any original songs in it. And uh, we need fact checking on that. So wait. <laughs> So wait, you asked how many? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we'll let that go. Ah! Oh no, there is a score of the Forrest Gump soundtrack. Is there? Yeah, it's well, in the original the... songs though. That score is different. But it, the score is the orchestral Fine. music written that takes place in between. There's a. Yeah. Uh, it's written by John Williams. No one buys. Are you serious? It was written by John Williams. No one buys the soundtracks for the scores. Only nerds do it. No, it wasn't. It was written by Alan Silvestri. Whatever. So it was very close. It was like the same amount of syllables, minus three. So, so it's, nobody's gonna go to all right. Nobody's gonna go to the store in 1996 to buy the score for a soundtrack. They're gonna buy the songs from the soundtrack in 1996, 93. Yeah. Right? Isn't that what you were just talking about? No, the score. I, when I was a wee lad, and I didn't bring it here on our last episode's uh, on taping, taping, unboxing, of unboxing of the stuff I pulled from my mom's house. I had I don't know where it is, but the score to uh, the Return of the Jedi. I do have the audio uh, <laughs> reading of A New Hope on there. You do, yeah. But uh, it's right here. Yeah. But nobody bought this. You're the only person that bought this. I am the only person. And the only, well, definitely maybe the only person that still has it. <laughs> you know, that's for a fact. It's definitely true. Anything else we want to go over today? It's 2 o'clock. I don't want to go back to work. Yeah, it's so. time to go to work. So uh, please check us out. Uh, follow us so you get notifications uh, when you ever get that notification thing. Do you want notifications about Real Brave Live? You say yes, because this is too much fun. Uh, Do we talk about practice pad? We did in the beginning. Oh, okay. You want to talk about it again? Uh, just that practice pad is uh, great. It's, and, uh, it's an online platform where we do a live lessons. Yes. It's a place to meet other people for music. It's our, it's our flagship software that we created ourselves, and it's helping uh, hundreds of students yeah. reach their musical goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, forget Zoom. This, this what we built here, is awesome, and um, you're able to have live lessons safe in the comfort of your own home, in your jammies. Mm. And, uh, jamming in your jammies. Jamming in your jammies. This it's made for everybody. Uh, kids six plus to one hundred and six. And I gotta say, the reviews are coming in, and um, it works really well. So it's got other cool stuff in there, but the main thing about it, it's it's a place to connect with an instructor. Mm-hmm. You can sign up online, and we'll get you free consultation, free lesson. Mm-hmm. Tell tell your friends so we could stay in business, mm-hmm. and. Um, 2021 is the year of prosperity. No, 2021 is the year of of hope 
and 2022 would be the year of prosperity. That's that is my that is my wish. Cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, thanks for joining us today. Please join us next week, uh, Wednesday at one o'clock for another episode. And Kevin, you can take us out. My name is Dan. This is Kevin. It's Real Brave Live. Real Brave.